Sister Alphonse, grade nines, my friends, how you guys doing? It is an honor for me to be here and to be able to uh, just share a couple words about uh, your departure from Sister Alphonse, your departure from like everything that's that was like as you were a child, you know? You guys are moving into high school now. It's like, you're playing in the big leagues now. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you guys in person, but uh, I'm really thankful that I get to share just a few words with you guys. And so I am going to share a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, I have to tell you right off the bat, and I don't know if you can, you can see that, but that says, the book of emo <laughs> okay i wrote it right down beside the cover page to this book in the bible and the author of ecclesiastes just kind of if you read this whole thing you might see like just a pessimistic view of life okay and i'll share a little more about that with you but let me first read this reading okay so this is a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises, the sun goes down, and it hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and then it goes around to the north. Around and around goes the wind, and on its circuit the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, where they continue to flow. All things are wearisome, more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, and the ear filled with hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you can hear in there, the author is just like, man, what's this all about anyway? Like, it's just one thing after another. And you know what? Like, this last year, 2020, 2021, am I right? Like, I've had Groundhog Days. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It's an old movie with Bill Murray, but he, like, lives the same day over and over again. And by the end of it, he's just like, you know, there's no way out of this. This is all going to be the same. Nothing's going to change. Nothing is, there's no meaning to it all. Like, I'm just kind of here to grind it out. You know what I mean? And so that's exactly what the author of Ecclesiastes is kind of expressing here. But you have to understand where this is being written from. So this is being written from the context, in the context of being the Israelites, who are God's chosen people. Like God specially said, okay, you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look out for you guys. You're, my, you're like, you're the ones. I, you're going to be my people. I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. Okay? And they're like, yes, we've got God on our side, right? But then they're like, hey, wait a second. Like, people are dying just like anyone else. People are starving just like anyone else. People are, you know, other people, bad people are living longer than, than us. We're supposed to be like the good people. And other people are living longer. Like, we're working hard. We're trying to obey all of God's laws. And it still feels like we're being punished. But here's what the mistake that they're making. Okay? They're wanting the gift more than the giver of the gift. They want God's blessing more than they want God. So if we, were ask, if we were to ask them the question of the meaning of life, they would be like in one place, kind of before any kind of realization like this, they'd be like, well, the meaning of life is to, like, is to work and to please God and to get his blessing and to be, you know, God's people. And they'd be half right. But they're looking for God's blessing when the real meaning, this is for you guys, this is for me, this is for every one of us. The real meaning to life, it's not the gifts. It's not God's blessing. It's God. The biggest, best thing we could get is a relationship with God. And that's ultimately what Jesus came to tell us. He's like, 
all of this, you know, spinning your wheels, trying to get ahead in the world or trying to live right, you know, do the right thing. Like the right thing is just to love me and love other people. Build a relationship with me that's going to last beyond this world, beyond just this life. If all we're doing is trying to build this life, build a career, build a bank account, you know, build up a list of accomplishments, a resume, like we're ultimately going to be saying the same things that this author is saying, that it's just kind of meaningless. I'm just spinning my wheels. But if we love, if we love God, if we love others, we build a life on love, we're going to have a life that goes on past this world. And that's the real meaning of life. So as you guys head out from Sister Alphonse, from grade nine into your high school, wherever that's going to be, I really hope I get to see a lot of you guys over at St. Al uh, St. Albert High. It'll be fantastic. Okay, But as you go out, start thinking, how do I relate to God? How do I love God and how do I love others? That's the meaning of life. All right, I love you guys. I look forward to seeing you. Congratulations on pioneering this for our school. You guys are awesome. See you soon.